Rabbi Donkey, donkey, um, Mulwani, Kuyadah, good day. What an honor and a privilege it is to be here today at this amazing function. This, dare I say, man, this iconic function in iconic Mosul Bay. Yeah. I watched that, I watched that, uh, that tourism uh, program that you ran and it was iconic. And it stood out. It was excellent. It's uh, what we expect here in this uh, municipality. Um, I noticed that people at our table sometimes are quite careful about what they say because uh, when you say too much about this municipality, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we're here in Moscow. And uh, we're here to celebrate this unique, special leading from the front innovation and you know when I sat down at our table there's a little board I don't know if you've all got these boards on your tables yes you all do excellent so in our government when you see the word VIP we have things called VIP they're called vision inspired priorities so I like you got VIPs on all of your tables and this vision inspired priority is safety as the cornerstone for exponential growth for a greater Mosul Bay region. And I think nothing says it like that. You know, I have been in government for quite a long time, and before I was in government, and being in government, my passion is jobs and the economy. And if your passion is jobs and the economy, and you have to say, well, what have we got to do about making sure we can get jobs and the economy going? The thing that stares you right in the face is safety. It's the thing that gets in the way of our ability to grow our economy, attract investment, grow jobs. It is the biggest obstacle. And that's why in our government, and I too, Minister, thank you for the introduction. I'm so glad that uh, we have so many of our ministers here. Because in our safety plan, every minister has a portfolio. Uh, and every portfolio has got something to do with safety or has a safety component in what they do. It doesn't matter whether you're education or agriculture. It doesn't matter whether you're economic development or local government. It doesn't matter whether you're infrastructure or mobility. It all has a role to play and all has to come together where we need to make sure uh, Minister Allen that it's safety. Of course we have made some other changes uh, like police oversight and I'll say a little bit, about, a bit more about that just now. But I want to say to everybody here in the region and partners because I think the place stands out. It's unbelievable what we saw here and what you have launched here today really leading from the front. But what is behind it is partnership. If you get the nexus of partnership right, you can achieve anything. And you can change anything. And you can make the biggest difference ever. And I don't want you to do it. It's absolutely outstanding. And you are definitely fair for it. I saw what you've delivered in reality here the other day in a presentation as part of one of the programs we have called uh, PDI, a Problem Driven Iterative Adaptation. It's a program that we've uh, developed, comes from Harvard University, and uh, Minister Allen saw this too. Um, I actually think uh, our Minister of Infrastructure was there. Yes, he was. Um, where you take a problem and you get hold of the whole of society, you get all the partners involved and you tackle that problem. You don't tackle the big problem, but you identify two or three levers within that big problem. And there was a presentation that stood out for me. I uh, took that presentation and uh, I talk about it often. But what stood out for me was it was how the city of Cape Town are trying to pull all of the partners together in a single space with technology and innovation and making sure that all of those partners sit in the space 
and we can actually make it safer. It's a PowerPoint presentation. Some of the reality is already there, but at the moment, it's a PowerPoint presentation. In Mossel Bay, it is a reality. And so, bye bye for luck. What you is for. And I love competition, and I'm sure you're going to put a lot of pressure on some other places, and that's great. But it also is co competition. Because speaking to the mayor, he said that uh, I think last weekend you spent with JP, who's leading the presentation out of Cape Town. And there are many things that Cape Town have done that's ahead of what we're doing. <laughs> There's many things that are happening, and Vescus, a big stick in this. But if we all work together and we bring those partnerships together and the knowledge together, we start to really push the boundaries and we start to make big, big differences. I must say, that there is probably one thing that I don't know if any other place, no matter what they do, is going to be able to beat you. Want ek weet nie van enige plek waar jy hierdie vernootskap by mekaar bring. Around safety, we've got the, all the tech and the place, but at the same time you've got a 19th hole in a view like this. <laughs> I don't know if there's any place that's going to be able to beat that. But that also talks about a key partnership. Who would ever think that a golf club would be the initiating partner in the place that says, let's pull this together? Where you actually have helicopters landing in front of you with golfers <coughs> dodging around the edges of the helicopters. But it really is a beacon that can stand proud. <coughs> and so I want to say, first of all, to every single person where the vision started, where the fights happened about not there or not here, where the containers for a neighborhood watch to store some stuff turned into an iconic place that is leading safety. Well done to every single person who has played a role in getting us here today. Congratulations. Thank you. And you can give all of those people. In our provincie het ons een paar areas waar op ons focus. Safety, 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 jobs, and the economy, and dignity. Dignity and well-being. Those are the three areas. You know, when you set about doing something, don't have 56 things. What are the three things you're going to focus on? And then when you're responsible for one of those three things, what are the three, what are the three things or the few things within that one responsibility that you're going to focus on. And of course, we'll come to safety now, but if we take, for example, in jobs, what are those things? And so in jobs, what is holding back jobs, besides safety as a big issue that I said in the beginning, but it's also about infrastructure. So you will see we've made an announcement, and we've now got an infrastructure ministry and an infrastructure department being built at the moment, because what is our problem? Safety is our problem in economic development and growth, but so is infrastructure. The infrastructure investment into energy product production in our country is a massive failure. The investment into long-term water is not happening fast enough. The infrastructure rail to relieve the pressure on our road systems is not operating in many parts of our country. In seven years' time, are we going to have more shacks or less shacks? We better have less shacks. If we don't get that right, well, then we saw what happened in, in the case at in July last year. We had a mess, by a mess, and it can explode. We've got to get it right, and infrastructure is key, let alone what a province normally del delivers on infrastructure. We've taken the same approach with mobility, and it is about how we get mobility right because people need to be able to get to school, get to work. Get the economy moving. Get your goods through the harbour. Mobility is a critical issue. And we have to think about it differently. But they all align into jobs. Another interesting, uh, another interesting uh, change that's happened in our government is our previous Minister of Finance and Economic Development is now the Minister of Education. But what's interesting there is education was always seen as this department that sits in the social cluster. No. The education department sits in the center of the economic cluster. 
The education department's job is to prepare our children for a job in the future. It must be aligned into the economy. And it's really interesting to see some, you just change a position and a viewpoint and you start to see different alignment. But let me come back to safety. And of course, as uh, Minister Allen said, not so long ago we made safety this big priority in our government. Something that the Constitution doesn't put a lot of focus on for a province. The Grondwet say policiering sits at a national level. Provinces, our job is oversight at a province. Oversight of police, and of course, uh, Minister, the PNP comes to cabinet tomorrow, right? the uh, policing needs and priorities, <coughs> which is our oversight document that we put together. <coughs> That's what goes into that oversight. I want to push the boundaries, I want to paint outside of the lines, and we're busy with the process because I do believe that provinces should have much more management when it comes to policing than at the moment in the current system. National government should have oversight of the provinces and not the other way around. Well, there's a story for another. Mm. We set ourselves a target in this province of halving the murder rate. We also said that uh, how do we do this? We have to have two focus areas. One, just sitting at the table here now, speaking to General Fulsko, we don't have enough resources and we don't have enough budget in our policing system. We know that. So the first thing we did, as difficult as it is, is we took a billion rand. And we said, let's take a billion rand of our budget and put it into extra boots on the ground. And let's deploy those boots to those hotspots, those murder hotspots. And uh, I know that when people phone me from Mossel Bay and say, Vaas on sleep of a cedar, I say to them, you are not getting any. Uh, just as I said the other day when a councillor phoned me from, from Ocean View, and I want to say to you in Mossel Bay, you have a different environment here to many parts of our province. A desperate call from Ocean View to say, please, 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 I need leap officers because people are just being shot left, right and centre with the gangsters. And I had to say to that councillor, I'm sorry, you're not a murder hotspot. But Minister Allen and his team have actually figured out a way of how to get around that. We've just <coughs> inaugurated the next 100 LEAP officers, and we now have 1,100 LEAP officers that are deployed into our hotspots, our 13 hotspots, and that's where they deploy, using data evidence to help partner with the police to bring down the murder rate. That's their job. We also have a reaction unit now, so Minister Regan, along with our partnership with policing, can actually say, let's, let's send the reaction unit to Ocean View if necessary, or as we have done now, um, to Mannenberg, uh, to places that really need it, that perhaps aren't part of the scientific deployment. But the interesting thing is for me, we set this as a 10-year plan, half the murder rate, because of course that number destroys me every time I think about it. 4,000 people are murdered in this province every year. Look at my number, 4,000 families, 4,000 families. You know, on Saturday afternoon, there's Jim, um, he arranged it along with Ramin, she's not here, but uh, on Saturday afternoon I joined a couple of our colleagues uh, at an event in Hanover Park. It's Women's Month, and uh, I joined this event with probably 100, uh, 150 mothers, sisters, grannies, aunts, in this event and so probably much like this tables 10 ladies per table what really hit me was that at every single table in that room in Hanover Park where most of those moms or sisters or grannies or aunts walked to that community center so they were just from that region around that community center. At every table, two and sometimes three of those moms at that table had lost a child in the last two years. The one lady at the first table, her daughter, she lost two weeks ago. And she was in the room. I, could not, I don't know if I would ever have been able to do that if it had been my child. 
And do you know those ladies in that room? Do you know what they do? They are all on the neighborhood watch. In the women's network. And they are all there at night when most people are sleeping in that neighborhood or walking the streets trying to make it safe. That day, I knew this safety plan is the right decision for this government. I know because of what those women said on Saturday that what you are doing here is exactly the right decision that you need to be making. Pulling this part, these partnerships together of civil society, neighborhood watches, of businesses, of people that are funding these kind of uh, operations, of police, of our traffic and fire services, our councils, our business chambers. I know that the Ombudsman now has a desk here. How amazing is that? That there's a desk that the Ombudsman can come and actually hear from citizens what is your issue? How can we help them? And we learn from all of those things. It is critical that we get this right. That we bring safety to the citizens of this province. It is critical. And that align with the deployment of those 1,100 LEAP officers. And you know that Nyanga, which has always for a long time been the murder capital of South Africa, the place that we should be the most embarrassed about when it comes to the murder numbers, is not in the top ten. It was not in the top ten. This I think Google Lex is now not even in the top thirty. Outside the top thirty. How's that? Cryfontaine have got almost 42% reduction in their murder. So those 13 areas are at the least plateauing in murder or decreasing. How do we grow this? How do we take this learning? And you know how we do the deployment? We do it through data. We do it through a plan and through data. And these officers are deployed 24-7 in partnership with the police. And we know that they must deploy, be deployed on a Friday evening and a Saturday evening and a Sunday evening. We know, sh we know from the data what time and in which areas. Because we must become smarter at how we deal with safety and crime. We must end up having technology like we walk through today and how we utilize that technology to make sure it becomes safer. Because Minister Allen said the criminals have learned a long time ago how to collaborate, work with each other, understand the ecosystem. I'll tell you who takes the most notice of ESCOM's load shedding schedule, the criminals. So we need to get ahead of it. I've seen it in our center and in the provincial building and we need to actually see if we can get one here. We've got a screen, just like you've got all of those screens, we've got a screen that's, that permanently comes up with the load shedding levels, and then as soon as we see there's load shedding coming in, then we inform our schools. We inform, we let people know that you, just so you don't, maybe don't know, but are our neighborhood watchers being informed that in 22 minutes there will be load shedding, or even in five minutes there will be load shedding. You need to be more vigilant, because the criminals must not be able to get ahead of us. We have to use technology and innovation. And we've done that and learned so many lessons. We ourselves have learned so many lessons from the day when we implemented it to today because of COVID-19. We learned during COVID-19 how many infections were happening, where they were happening, GIS mapped every single day. We put it on a dashboard for the public to see. What you could see was what was happening every 24 hours. What we could see below the dashboard, which is what you actually want in your control rooms, what we could see is how many COVID-19 cases there were GIS mapped by household and street. And that's how we knew where the hotspots were. Where we could zoom in on a hotspot and say, go there because there's a lot of spread and we need to slow it down. We then could do the same with uh, vaccination. We could detect which were super spreader events. We knew that an event at a university 
ended up in exponentially growing cases of COVID-19. We knew that a nightclub was a go out, but you spent the whole night drawing in that uh, club, and when curfew ended, you all went home. Well, that didn't last very long because our data picked it up, and we zapped that guy. Then I said, if we can do that with a virus, why can't we do that with crime? How come we don't know that same data and detail, hotspot mapping with crime? And that's the interesting and innovative stuff that's happening right now. And perhaps more so in the violence prevention area. Because remember, safety is not only about boots on the ground and policing. What we also have to do, and that is all of our challenge. What is the next layer to what we're doing here? Wanneer jy gaan nou nog al, ek weet nie of jy bouw regulaties vir jy gaan toelaat om nog op te gaan? But, nee. Okay, so wanneer dat ons so langsaan bouw, are your business chamber offices going to be there? Are your social development offices going to be close by? Are you going to be linking economic activity to safety? Are you going to be deploying social workers linked to the hotspots that are identified through this data. And how are you using that data? Violence prevention, we've just launched our violence prevention uh, data that's run by the Department of Health. Hectus detail in our hospitals, which is now 27 of our hospitals. So we know that trauma cases, our health department deals with. Even if it's a body, the body has to have an autopsy, right? If it's a stabbing, the person ends up in our hospital. If it's a gunshot, the person ends up in our hospital. So, in, if it's a rape case, the person ends up in our hospital. So our hospital data, I'm sorry to say, is much more accurate than our policing data. And so, well, how do we bring that together? So how, in the next iteration, is our violence prevention data going to come out here at this level so we make decisions? And it's exciting, at the same time very scary. So in violence prevention, I mean there's a lot of detail in that dashboard and we need to work at how we integrate it here. But I'll just give you one example, um, and I'll give it over and over again to our team because I want to know what we're doing about it. So in violence prevention, gender-based violence. Our hospital data can tell us that women, pregnant women, who are abused, are generally abused in the second trimester. They are abused by men between the ages of 24 and 34, and in the following hotspot GIS mapped areas. How's that for information? The question is, thy area, but of I can't say, there's a roy. Great, we know that. That's where the most females who are pregnant are abused. What are we doing with that? So now I want to know what we're going to try in this area, and maybe it's more social workers, maybe we're going to call all the men into the room and we're going to sort them out. I don't know what it is, but we need to try things and we need to see what's going to work because we need to bring that number down. Because if we don't get the violence prevention right, well then what's going to happen is next year we're just going to need more police, and the year after more police, and the year after more police. We've got to come at the causalities. Chrysalis. We've got to be able to get those young boys, those young men and women, who are now stepping off the path. We've got to be able to bring them back in, send them to a program, a boot camp, teach them how to weld and cook and whatever else we teach them there, make them proud citizens, clean of drugs and whatever else they were there for, and ready to go out into the world. And Minister Allen and the police have just done a partnership where the first 60, yeah? 79. 79 Christmas students are now being deployed in partnership with SAPS to our police stations so that they, these Christmas students, in a police station will actually do the affidavits and the admin work to relieve another uniformed officer to get out there to help fight. How cool is that much? But what a big difference you're making to that young person's life on their way to the gangs, and now suddenly, they've got a future ahead of them. Those young boys who are risk takers, being pulled into the gangs, 
are now being diverted through violence prevention, are now being identified and given opportunity to stay in some program that they become a risk taker later on in life. They become an entrepreneur who's a risk taker. They become a positive add to our society. That is violence prevention. That is getting ahead of the curve. And I mean, there's so many different areas that we focus on here. And I know that I stand between you and lunch and another meeting. So I can't even hear say any. I could talk about uh, ombudsmans and uh, GBV, rural safety, rural safety minister. Um, there are so many things that I am uh, not dealing with yet. But I just want to say that what an amazing event this is today. What an amazing opportunity this is. What an amazing partnership. And of course the partnership is not completed and probably never will be completed. I know that the next level from our side is not the contribution to the K9 unit, but is to get our own traffic systems <coughs> and camera systems integrated here into your systems. Because if we don't get the integration and partnership right, we're not going to get it. The reason that we're here is to celebrate. The reason that we are here is to draw a line in the sand and say to those criminals out there, we're coming for you. We are using our organized partnerships to make sure that we are building a safer society. And from this region, this region, Mossel Bay, the other municipalities around Mossel Bay, and the district itself, we are saying, net soos I beat, waar genoeg is genoeg, en ons gaan nou verandering bring, and we are going to exponentially move to another level. And we are going to lead from the front from this region. So I want to say to you, well done, congratulations. We will all put shoulder to the wheel in this partnership going forward. And also we'll take and see what the Fa'anaran Kong a Yiri Gedeelte van ons land. Waar voor ons allemaal lief is. En die leiderskap wat hier uitkom, wat Fa'anaran gaan bring. Not only here in this district, the Gardnery district. Not only in this province, but in this country. We've got to lead change and everyone must step up wherever we can and you guys are certainly doing it. Thank you very much.